Hello everybody and welcome. I am Bricker Boom and we are back with Pokemon by Daylight, a series that we are taking the Dead by Daylight killers and soon the survivors and giving them a full team of six Pokemon. Typically we are going to be trying to go for the evolved form, but if a Pokedex entry is just too perfect in the prior form, we're probably going to be sticking to that just to make the team a little bit more tailored to their backstory. In this episode, we are going to be covering Dredge, Blight, and Knight. Now, I do want to say the Knight specifically has a very long backstory. The Dredge and Blight, their backstories are kind of ish. But let's go ahead, hop into it. No sense in wasting time. Let's go ahead and cover the Dredge first. Okay, and so I got the, the Dredge stuff thing up. So whenever you guys are ready. Yeah, I am ready when you be. Cool. Okay. Uh... <clears throat> oh yes. Make sure, I my, make sure I have my library voice. The fold was founded on a private American island in the 1960s by a group of anonymous philanthropists. Their goal was to establish a peaceful society free of dark thoughts and emotions, attracting the dismayed, disenchanted, and disillusioned from all over the country. Life was more or less a utopian dream on the island, until that is the darkness began to slowly leak through the cracks of their spiritual dam and members began to mysteriously disappear. Over the howling wind and pouring rain, the screams and curses grew louder and louder as everyone desperately tried to contain the darkness within. But the harder they tried, the quicker they ailed. And within moments, the dam burst with a release of torrent of hell. It was everywhere and nowhere at once, as it slowly picked its way through the carnage, absorbing the darkness, savoring the misery, trailing terrible noises, shrieks, cries, whimpers, pops, cracks, feasting sounds, death sounds, dark sounds. A twisted abomination too disturbing to bear, the dredge's malevolence is palpable. All light slowly drains in its presence, surrounding survivors in darkness. Using lockers as map-wide gateways, it can emerge at any moment, seemingly everywhere all at once. The dredge is a manifestation of the dark thoughts of a once vibrant community able to teleport between lockers and summon an overwhelming darkness. The end. I think the dredge's best team suited for him would be Gengar due to living in the shadows, Crocodile due to having excellent eyesight to stalk small prey, it reacts kind of like, in my w thought process, how the dredge, uh, when nightfall happens, how certain survivors light up. Haunch Crow, because its Pokedex entry makes it so that it is as a known summoner of the night. Not the, the K night, but it, anyway. Arbok, due to the whispers coming from its mouth while hunting, much like the cries and sobs that you hear when nightfall is going on, especially there towards the end. Shedinja, because of its hollow body, the dredge, when you see its mori dragging you in, there is no body there, it's just empty inside, so I think this fits very well. And then finally, Trevenant, because it controls trees at will, much like the dredge is able to control shadows. So with that being said, the dredge's full team would be Gengar, Crocodile, Honchcrow, Arbok, Shedinja, and Trevenant. And if I am messing up pronunciations in this video, or most videos, I apologize. Next up to the list, we have The Blight. And, well, listen to his backstory. Yay, bark, bark, bark. <laughs> yeah, bark, bark. <laughs> bark, bark, bark. Bark, bark, bark. Bark, bark, bark. <laughs> bark, bark, bark. <laughs> oh my god, what are we, five? I don't we're know, but I'm to probably going to keep this in the video. <laughs> oh, <you know. laughs> okay, so we're at least three and a half, got it. Uh-huh. <laughs> to understand the human condition, one must rise above it. This was the credo of Talbot Grimes, a Scottish chemist whose unrestrained ambition took him to towering heights. His willingness to push the limits secured him in a position with the British East India Company. And within seven years, he was made the head chemist. In time, he completed one of his greatest achievements, a chemical that would, could increase a worker's productivity while reducing their need for rest. He was rewarded with a secret laboratory beneath a prison camp on Dyer Island. 
There, off the coast of India, prisoners from the Opium War became his unwilling subjects, leading to a drug that allowed soldiers to withstand incredible amounts of pain. Though most side effects were minor, there were rumors that a small number of soldiers went mad. In feral states, they massacred villages, impaling the populace with bayonets, leaving them hanging from trees. There were no official reports on the subject, and Talbot refused to blame himself for what could only be exaggerated war stories. Then everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> when he got high as fuck in an opium den. His next memories were a shattered mosaic of images and sensations, smearing lights, horse hoofs on cobblestone, coarse burlap scratching at his cheeks, and sharp bites into his arm. He woke ragged and unwashed, splayed on the straw mattress of an opium den. Mine in a dense fog, his first thought was of his notes, the only record of his groundbreaking revelations, the verge of a breakthrough. A faraway whisper entered his mind. He fumbled with a stone, sharpening it with his shaking hands. In the dim light of the den, amongst the catatonic occupants, he carved his research from memory into the walls. He wrote for hours until his fingers bled, moving to the floor, taking in everything the voice whispered, despite his inability to comprehend it. When there was nowhere left to write, he gripped the stone and carved the message into his chest. Stained with blood, he witnessed a miracle appear before him, a magnificent field of lush orange flowers. The whispered voice beckoned to him, urged him to enter the field and discover worlds and dimensions beyond human comprehension. For a moment, Talbot felt the sense of wonder he'd possessed as a child. The denizens of the opium den awoke to the silence, the dry scent of smoke still lingering in the air. Shambling out of their drug-hazed fog, they found the stone floor wet with blood, tiny rivulets coursing through the cracks. As eyes adjusted to the darkened room, the jagged lettering scrawled along its length began to appear. Written over and over, without end, there was but one single line. Death is only the beginning. Capable of gaining ground on survivors in mere moments, the Blight's lethal efficiency must never be underestimated. With the ability to bounce off surfaces and realign his trajectory, his relentless presence forces survivors into snap decisions. The Blight is an unpredictable killer, able to rush forward in a burst of speed and bounce off obstacles to injure survivors using his power, Blighted Corruption. Yeah, he, so he just basically made drugs, got drugs. high off drugs, went crazy with drugs, drugs. drugs. Kind of messed up, huh? Well, we're going to be focusing on a certain type of Pokemon, uh, but also this is the first time that I knowingly gave someone a not fully evolved Pokemon because the Pokedex entry just fit so well, but we'll get to that in a minute. Light's team would involve Vileplume due to the toxic pollens being used to infect others. Quick Bricker Boom in post note in the anime, Erica was able to take the pollen or spores from her gloom and change that into a perfume. With Vile Plume, it's essentially the same concept, just a little bit more potent. Bye! Umbreon, due to the fact that in one of its Pokedex entries, it will literally sweat poison and I feel like that could be used very well for someone that likes to inject their body with poison. Toxapex, due to the after effects of coming in contact with the poison, during Blight's uh, time, he did experiments on other people who obviously had some type of adverse side effects. This is the one that I was very proud of, Whirlipede, because what it does is it spins its body like a wheel, and crashes into enemies, and if you've ever played with Blight, you know he really likes to slam into people. Toxicroak, due to the poison coming down the tubes and its arms, much like the whole thing that Blight has set up. And then finally Muck, due to the poison sludge that his body is literally comprised of. So with that, Blight's full team is going to be Vileplume, Umbreon, Toxapex, Whirlipede, Toxicroak, and Muck. Next up, we have the Knight. Now, I want to go ahead and just let you know, the Knight's backstory is 
forever long. We trimmed it down as much as we possibly could, but there was only so much that we could do. So, strap in! It's fine, everything's fine. Okay, here we go. This is gonna be great. And so, buckle up, everybody. It's All gonna right. be a long one. All right. And yeah, it's definitely worth buckle. going to... Shut up! Oh, <laughs> God, you're the worst. Okay, so you, it's better off if people go to, like, the Dead by Daylight wiki and actually read up on these stories, because this is, like, the super shortened version of it. And the, the longer stuff has, like, cute little Easter eggs in it, which I like. Tarhas Kovax didn't, didn't remember much, much about his childhood, but what he did remember, he would chase his entire life. He remembered the cries and screams in the village. He remembered his mother, forcing him to swallow a thick, black liquid like medicine. He remembered collapsing to the hard floor, only to awaken in a mass grave, buried ben under a crush of bodies, with the sound of the village burning in his ears. He remembered <clears throat> pushing, pulling, and climbing to the top of the bloody mass, only to be seized by the death, destruction, and silence. The indifferent and impenetrable silence. A high-pitched whine suddenly sounded in his ears, and his skin began to prickle as he realized he was in the presence of something he couldn't possibly understand. And though he couldn't articulate what he was experiencing, he knew it wasn't relief, grief, or fear. It was something else. Something closer to awe. As Tarhas tried to make sense of the moment, he didn't notice the men who approached him from behind. He didn't even react when they carried him off on a horse-drawn buggy and locked him up in a small wooden cage with other slaves. He just stared at the scene, mesmerized. Even as they rode away telling him he was headed for Italy, Tarha stared through the wooden cracks with wi eyes wide open and a heart wanting to understand what could not be understood. From that day on, Tarha belonged to the Guardia Compagna, the company guard, and eventually earned the undying allegiance of three faithful followers. Lady Gaga's leading man, Alejandro Santiago, the jailer, <laughs> apprenticed with uh, the, oh, the armorer. He's cool. Uh, Dirk, oh, fuck. This is going to be bad. Dirkos Malasek, an assassin, showed an aptitude for stealth and silent kills. Sander Rout, lovingly nicknamed Biggie G's, <laughs> matched Tarhas in size and strength. His weapon of choice, a massive battle axe. In time, several lords in the neighboring provinces believed Tarhas was the very embodiment of evil. They banded together to create a moral and virtuous army to purge the evil. Tarhas ignored their threats, but the lords soon acted on them. Tarhas was stood silent for a moment, then with a roar of indignation burst out of his lungs as the, oh God, as the sounds of battle suddenly reverberated through the town. Instantly, he stumbled through the corridor, rushed up the twisting stairs, vaulted out of the moonlit doorway, and charged through pools of gleaming blood and viscera, smashing and shattering his way through the enemy. And as they butchered the enemy, Tarhas didn't notice the strange fog rising from the fallen corpses and clattering ar armor until he couldn't see two inches in front of him in any direction. Tarhas stumbled forward, groping in the thick fog like the dark fluid his mother forced him down his throat all those years ago. His coordination and sense of direction was confused as he called out for his three followers. How long he stumbled in the almost perfect darkness, he did not know. But suddenly the fog dissipated to reveal a phantasmal wasteland of rotting bodies and burning villages and great crumbling towers leaning drunkenly on the horizon that need to go home. He stared in awe. A familiar high-pitched whine sounded in his ears, and his skin began to prickle like it did that day. He stood transfixed, realizing by some incredible chance his heart had found exactly what it had been searching for all his life. The knight is a strategic killer, able to send his faithful guards to hunt for survivors and damage objects on the battlefield. His perks allow him to reveal survivors near generators, curse survivors to scream out in fear, and cause a survivor who stuns you to become exposed. And with that... The knight's team is Gallade because it is a master of courtesy and swordsmanship, and it has freaking swords on its elbows. Aegislash, due to the fact that it is an actual sword. Bronzong, because when angered, it lets out a warning cry that sounds like a tolling bell, which, one, is good for the time period, and two, when the knight has summoned his friends, you'll notice uh, towards the end of their chase you hear a horn going off. 
somewhat comparable by Sharp because it leads a group of Pontiard, which to me is kind of like the knight ordering the others around, Surfetched because it looks like a knight, and Escavalier because it uses two lances. So, the knight's full team is Gallade, Aegislash, Bronzong, Pontiard, Surfetched, and Escavalier. So, that'll cover this particular installment of Pokemon by Daylight. In two weeks, we will be dropping three more, which will be Wesker, Oni, and Spirit. Had a lot of fun with that. Again, this series has been a lot of fun for me. I know that Aaron and the Baby Rhino have been having fun, whether or not they tell you they haven't been, and I do keep them locked up. Just ignore that. It's fine. I hope that you guys are enjoying it. Make sure to go ahead, hit that like and subscribe button. Also, leave a comment below if there are other video game series, comic books, etc. that you would want to see me make a Pokemon team for. It may be with friends, it may be solo, who knows. But, as I always say, if you like the video, even if you didn't like the video, hit the like and subscribe button, because it really does help me out. And until next time, everybody, peace out. Yay, bark, bark, bark.